So if you look very hard and you happen to be in the west end of the city centre of Edinburgh, you might be able to stumble upon the Edinburgh Gin Distillery down our little rabbit hole. We're, we're quite an experimental brand. We do a lot of new product development. We bring out a new gin at the moment about once a year. It is fairly unique, it's a small place, we, we run a visitor centre, we're pretty much full every single day for tours and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's my favourite thing about the place is uh, our innovation and our interaction with the public. Yeah, the growth in uh, popularity of gin is mostly due with the, the increase in the quality and the small producers making better quality gin. It makes it a, a more desirable product. I mean, it's, it's got a big captive market, especially in Edinburgh, where there's a lot of uh, middle-class drunk ladies, and they are really fantastic for Edinburgh gin. We, we love them very much, and we'll continue to provide them with gin. So we've got 250 litre stills from Stuttgart in Germany. They were built specifically for the space, so they're, they're tailor-made and they fit exactly into the tiny little still room that we have here. So we take uh, the fruit, add it into a, 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 our Edinburgh gin, dilute it down to 20% ABV, add a little sugar and leave them to macerate for a long time. And then we strain out everything that we uh, want to keep. So we, we produce a, a much sweeter style of flavored uh, gin liqueur from that which can be used in many ways a lot of people use it in cocktails but uh, a lot of the time it's drunk with a glass of Prosecco or uh, however you want really some people drink it neo over ice with a bit of tonic whatever whatever works but yeah we try and use um, Scottish ingredients where possible obviously uh, vanilla and ginger are a little tricky to find in Scotland but where we can we use Scottish ingredients So we have eight gins in our main range. We have uh, four full strength gins and we also have four liqueurs. Uh, by far our most popular of the liqueurs is uh, rhubarb and ginger. We uh, can keep that on the shelves most of the time. It flies out all over the place. I think a good, a good way to start drinking gin, especially if you're not a particular fan of a gin and tonic or whatever, you could go for a Tom Collins or something. So you've got a a gin-based drink, but with some with some lemon juice, some soda water, and a bit of sugar. It kind of very lively, bubbly springtime kind of drink. Easy one to uh, sip away on. So I mean, Tom Collins is always a good way into gin if you're not immediately confident drinking it. Um, don't don't dive straight into a martini because you'll you'll never drink it again. But uh, yeah, evolve into a martini and you'll be happy forever. <laughs> Scotland in general is a hub of craft gin production. We make some of the best gin in the world here. Yeah, I think as long as we have little artisanal producers that really care about what they're doing and some uh, good quality gin being made, it'll continue to go from strength to strength, I think. <laughs>